Hello, and welcome to a second Centipede Press unboxing in a row. Uh, before we even open up the box, fun thing, the uh, printing label on this was printed on the back of a digital proof uh, from Sheridan. Now, this is, of course, not a nice uh, physical proof where you're like, oh, cool, this is a collector's item. Uh, but it's fun nonetheless. You know, Jared reuses materials for his packaging, which I am A-OK -okay with. Uh, and in this case, he used the print. Uh, so anyways, I don't even think I said what we're unboxing here. We're unboxing Son of the Endless Night by John Ferris, uh, which is still available right now, uh, most likely because it is a pricier title. Uh, is there Mylar already on this dust jacket? I mean, it looks like it, because it looks thicker. But uh, it is obviously in a shrink wrap. I actually said in the last video that it seemed like they had gone away from the Sheridan slips. And I was like, oh, there's usually a slip in the top like that and a little sticker on the outside. And that is what I was referring to if you watched my unboxing for Hellstone uh, by Stephen Sproul. So this is John Ferris's Son of the Endless Night featuring David Ho's artwork yet again. Uh, and it has a Mylar protector already on the jacket. Whoa, look at that stamping. Uh, so we're going to get to that stamping in a second, I believe, and I'm going to do this for your viewing pleasure, this is a double-sided dust jacket, which is kind of unfortunate that he has the Mylar on it, because many people might not realize that on the back you have John Mello's artwork, which I want to say this is probably the original artwork, it has that original uh, kind of feel to it. So one side has David Ho's artwork with a nice matte finish. Other side, glossier finish, John Mello's artwork. So if you do have this, you do have your options. Uh, the book itself, look at that stamping on the cover and on the spine and on the rear. Wow. This is a heavy book. Of course, her top edge stain as well. Uh, man, this is this is a little pricier. Uh, so it's pricier than the previous title. Uh, this is the two hundred dollar range. Uh, this was on sale, uh, like for like thirty bucks cheaper the first weekend it went up. I don't know if that sale price still is applicable, but I'll link in the description below. You can try to see if you could save some money as well. You're probably thinking, "Holy crap, that's a lot of money for a book!" But wow. You, you could feel it in the quality, and I haven't even opened the book to, you know, its proper uh, contents yet. But you can tell, man. Oh, man, there's a lot leading into the book itself here. He is like, all right, we're going to put we're gonna put all of the color artwork right up front. And I'm fine with it. Uh, so, of course, we have David Ho's artwork throughout. We have an introduction by David J. Scow. That is top-notch. Uh, so, forward by John Ferris, introduction by David J. Scow. Uh, then the book is comprised of three parts, followed by an interview with John Ferris. And then we have various illustrations as well. Uh, this is actually providing the illustrations and uh, who the artist is. So, it's not just David Ho throughout. You have a bunch of uh, Franz Forrest, David Ho, Thomas Lawrence, John Mello on page 38. So, we have plenty of art to spare Facing this page. I like that. So that is uh, uh, Ambro uh, Fredo. The Blessed Guillermo de Toulouse, Tormented by Demons. So spectacular. Uh, this is a novel of demonic possession. A young girl has gone missing. Oh, we have different end papers in the back, too, than the front. Uh, a young girl has gone missing, a girl named Polly. Uh, a hiker named Rich has decided... Oh, wow, so this, this was, introduction was written in December of 2020, just to go to show uh, how long this book has been in production. Of course, we have more color artwork there. It's very nice paper stock. And yes, okay, so it wasn't necessarily the first edition by John Mello. The first edition is presumably the St. Martin's Press one to the left here, uh, but the first tour paperback edition uh, was with John Mello, and it looks like it's a die-cut uh, cover. I, I love those die-cut covers. I actually have a couple of the retro uh, die-cut covers of some John Ferris novels. Not this one, uh, but I picked up a couple from, uh, was it, man, was it even Ferris? I want to say it was Ferris. 
uh, that I picked up from PS Publishing from uh, the PS Publishing's personal sales, Pete's Bookstore. And there's some very fun inscriptions in those ones, uh, some of which have, like, a die cut. One of them, the inscription said, a beautiful cover for a terrible book. And I'm like, that that's just a kind of self-awareness you have to appreciate if the author's kind of mocking his own work. But, I mean, hey, that happens, you know. You, you get kind of caught up in the satanic panic, kind of, you know, that's where the pop, that's where the money is these those days, wanting to get right in with the uh, the schlock, and so he wrote schlock. Uh, so anyways, you know, we're five minutes, almost six minutes in, and I've hardly talked about the book proper. Uh, this is some very nice paper stock. This is not like a traditional paper. Right? This is nice, kind of almost creamy paper. It's got a very nice creamy feel to it, if that makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, then you haven't treated yourself to a nice book with creamy paper stock. Um, anyways, young girl named Polly has been kidnapped uh, by a satanic cult. This was published, of course, in the 80s in the midst of satanic panic. A young man named Rich decides that he is going to try to save Polly. Things don't go according to plan. Rich finds himself in jail uh, and seemingly possessed by a demon. And it's up to Rich's brother or half-brother. Presumably that's Rich. Uh, I want to say it was a half-brother, maybe it was his regular full brother, I don't know, uh, having to try to clear Rich's name, try to make everything good and, uh, you know, good and all right in the end. Uh, but wow, this is a decent-sized novel, too. This had to have been a thick paperback. I mean, I'll buy it. I mean, the uh, the margins are larger. We are looking at a nice typeset here. Uh Whereas in the paperback, you'd have a smaller font size, more narrow margins. But still, we're looking at hundreds upon hundreds of pages here. We're looking at at least 600 pages, if not more, in the hardcover edition. Uh, so I imagine the paperback, even with the smaller font, even with the smaller margins, had to have been a, a thick and fat paperback. And finally, I have some David Ho artwork there. It's good to see David Ho doing some artwork again. I remarked in the last video that... Uh, he seemed to have taken a break from illustrating. Uh, just sort of, you know, the man has illustrated a ton over his career, uh, especially with Centipede Press. He was like the almost like the in-house uh, art, uh, artist, not actually in-house because you know he's got quite a good career outside of. Uh, oh, so this is uh, actually an interview conducted by Stanley Waiter, uh, who is the one that did uh, was it Dark Dreamers was the name of it. That uh, collection of essays and conversations. I don't think this was necessarily a interview done for that collection, but who knows? Maybe it was. Maybe this is a reprint. Uh, but it's cool to see his name pop up. But anyways, David Ho, he seemed to drop off the scene for a while. I mean, he was doing like a dozen, like a half a dozen to a dozen Centipede Press titles a year, it seemed. Like he was just the go-to illustrator and he kind of fell off. Uh, so anyways, this is, of course, signed by John Ferris, David J. Scow, and David Ho. Uh, I will say that my only complaint with this edition is that it looks like the signatures didn't quite want to take... I mean, the signatures are fine. The signatures are all right. They're right there. Uh, thankfully, they, they turned out fine on this copy. Uh, but there might be other copies out there where uh, the creamier paper stock might not work as well signature-wise. You can see, like, David Ho's is kind of, not smeared per se, but it's uh, it's fainter, uh, just because not all pens are going to want to write on this type of paper. But it happens. Um, you know, it, I've, seen, I've seen much worse. I've seen better, but I've also seen much worse. Uh, but anyways, that, my friends, is Son of the Endless Night by John Ferris, which is currently still available from Centipede Press uh, in the signed edition. There's also a bundle going on where you get both of these titles plus another Centipede Press... Not, it's not both these titles. This title plus a second Centipede Press title for a slightly reduced rate. Uh, I don't know why I said both these titles. It's probably just because I just did another unboxing, uh, which was Hellstone, and so I've got both of them on my mind. Oh, I just realized you've got, like... They're almost depicting the same image on the artwork. You have your kind of demon with a little girl in front of it, and David Ho, you got your demon uh, with a little girl in front of it. You really tell with the demon wing off on the back page there. Uh, so, wow, that is a spectacular edition. Like I said, yes, it is pricier, 
Uh, but if you want to treat yourself to a very nice and very heavy, I cannot emphasize that enough. This is this is heavy. What was the weight on the box? What does it say? Let's see. I'm not good at the guess your weight game, so I'm going to go back to the box here. Oh, it's only five pounds, which doesn't seem, it feels heavier than five pounds, but the shipping label says five, so I'm going to go with that. Uh, but yeah, very heavy book. Still available right now as of the time me posting this from Centipede Press. Uh, if you want a classic 80s horror novel in a very, very nice small press edition, then you should definitely check this out. Uh, if you want to just live vicariously through me, then subscribe to the channel. I have plenty of unboxing videos on the channel, including plenty of Centipede Press titles, as well as other publishers, as well as at least one book review a week. Uh, so plenty to check out. Anyways, thank you very much for watching. Check out Centipede Press, and we'll see you around next time.